Belgium controlled two colonies during its history, the Belgian Congo from 1885 to 1960 and Rwanda-Urundi from 1916 to 1962. It also had a concession in China, and was a co-administrator of the Tangier International Zone in Morocco. Roughly 98% of Belgium's overseas territory was just one colony about 76 times larger than Belgium itself, known as the Belgian Congo. This had originated as the personal property of the country's king, Leopold II, rather than being gained through the political or military action of the Belgian state. Topic background Belgium received its independence in 1830 after a revolution against the Dutch government of the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. By the time Belgian independence was universally recognised in 1839, most European powers already had colonies and protectorates outside Europe and had begun to form spheres of influence. During the 1840s and 50s, King Leopold I tentatively supported several proposals to acquire territories overseas. In 1843, he signed a contract with Ladd & Co. to colonize the Kingdom of Hawaii, but the deal fell apart when Ladd & Co. ran into financial difficulties. Belgian traders also extended their influence in West Africa but this too fell apart following the Rio Nunez incident of 1849 and growing Anglo-French rivalry in the region. By the time Belgium's second king, Leopold II, was crowned, Belgian enthusiasm for colonialism had abated. Successive governments viewed colonial expansion as economically and politically risky and fundamentally unrewarding, and believed that informal empire, continuing Belgium's booming industrial trade in South America and Russia, was much more promising. As a result, Leopold initially pursued his colonial ambitions without the support of the Belgian government. Topic Leopold I's colonial ambitions The archives of the Belgian Ministry of Foreign Affairs contain documents from the reign of Leopold I discussing possible colonies. Some were attempted colonies, whereas others were only considered as possibilities. Topic major possessions topic In the Congo topic Congo Free State 1885 Colonial rule in the Congo began in the late 19th century. King Leopold II of Belgium, frustrated by his nation's lack of international power and prestige, tried to persuade the Belgian government to support colonial expansion around the then largely unexplored Congo Basin. Their ambivalence led Leopold to create a colony himself. With support from a number of Western countries who saw Leopold as a useful buffer between rival colonial powers, Leopold achieved international recognition for the Congo Free State in 1885. The Free State government exploited the Congo for its natural resources, first ivory and later rubber, which was becoming a valuable commodity. With the support of the colonial military, the force publique, the territory was divided into private concessions. The Anglo-Belgian India Rubber Company Abir, among others, used force and brutality to extract profit from the territory. Their regime in the Congo used forced labour, and murder and mutilation on indigenous Congolese who did not fulfil quotas for rubber collections. Millions of Congolese died during this time. Many deaths can be attributed to new diseases introduced by contact with European colonists, including smallpox which killed nearly half the population in the areas surrounding the lower Congo River. A sharp reduction of the population of the Congo through excess deaths occurred in the Free State period but estimates of the deaths toll vary considerably. Although figures are estimates, it is believed that as many as 10 million Congolese died during the period, roughly a fifth of the population. As the first census did not take place until 1924, it is difficult to quantify the population loss of the period and these figures have been disputed by some who, like William Rubinstein, claim that the figures cited by Adam Hochschild are speculative estimates based on little evidence. Although the Congo Free State was not officially a Belgian colony, Belgium was its chief beneficiary in terms of trade and the employment of its citizens. Leopold II personally accumulated considerable wealth from exports of rubber and ivory the colony acquired at gunpoint. Much of this was spent on public buildings in Brussels, Ostend and Antwerp. Topic: <inaudible> Belgian Congo 1908 to 60. Leopold achieved international recognition for the Congo Free State in 1885. By the turn of the century, however, the violence used by free state officials against indigenous Congolese and the ruthless system of economic extraction led to intense diplomatic pressure on Belgium to take official control of the country, which it did in 1908, creating the Belgian Congo. Belgian rule in the Congo was based on the colonial trinity, trinité coloniale of state, missionary and private company interests. 
The privileging of Belgian commercial interests meant that large amounts of capital flowed into the Congo and that individual regions became specialized. On many occasions, the interests of the government and private enterprise became closely tied, and the state helped companies break strikes and remove other barriers raised by the indigenous population. The country was split into nesting, hierarchically organized administrative subdivisions, and run uniformly according to a set native policy. Politique indigene. This was in contrast to the British and the French, who generally favoured the system of indirect rule whereby traditional leaders were retained in positions of authority under colonial oversight. During World War I, Congolese troops participated in offensives against German forces in the area of modern-day Rwanda and Burundi which were placed under Belgian occupation. The Congo had a high degree of racial segregation. The large numbers of white immigrants who moved to the Congo after the end of World War II came from across the social spectrum, but were always treated as superior to blacks. Congolese troops participated in World War II and were instrumental in forcing the Italians out of their East African colonies during the East African Campaign. During the 1940s and 1950s, the Congo had extensive urbanization, and the colonial administration began various development programs aimed at making the territory into a model colony. One of the results was the development of a new middle class of Europeanized African evolues in the cities. By the 1950s the Congo had a wage labor force twice as large as that in any other African colony. In 1960, as the result of a widespread and increasingly radical pro-independence movement, the Congo achieved independence, becoming the Republic of Congo Leopoldville under Patrice Lumumba and Joseph Kasavubu. Poor relations between factions within the Congo, the continued involvement of Belgium in Congolese affairs, and intervention by major parties of the Cold War led to a five-year-long period of war and political instability, known as the Congo Crisis, from 1960 to 1965. This ended with the seizure of power by Joseph Desiree Mobutu. Rwanda-Arundi Rwanda-Arundi was a part of German East Africa under Belgian military occupation from 1916 to 1924 in the aftermath of World War I, when a military expedition had removed the Germans from the colony. It became a League of Nations World B mandate allotted to Belgium, from 1924 to 1945. It was designated as a United Nations Trust Territory, still under Belgian administration, until 1962, when it developed into the independent states of Rwanda and Burundi. After Belgium began administering the colony, it generally maintained the policies established by the Germans, including indirect rule via local Tutsi rulers, and a policy of ethnic identity cards, later retained in the Republic of Rwanda. Revolts and violence against Tutsi, known as the Rwandan Revolution, occurred in the events leading to independence. <inaudible> Minor possessions <inaudible> Santo Tomas, Guatemala <inaudible> In 1842, a ship sent by King Leopold I of Belgium arrived in Guatemala. The Belgians observed the natural riches of the Department of Isabel and decided to settle in Santo Tomas de Castilla and build infrastructure in the region. Rafael Carrera gave them the region in exchange for 16,000 pesos every year from the government of Guatemala. On 4 May 1843, the Guatemalan parliament issued a decree giving the district of Santo Tomas in perpetuity to the Company Belgique de Colonisation, a private Belgian company under the protection of King Leopold I of Belgium. It replaced the failed British Eastern Coast of Central America Commercial and Agricultural Company. Belgian colonising efforts in Guatemala ceased in 1854, due to lack of financing and high mortality due to yellow fever and malaria, endemic diseases of the tropical climate. Tianjin Concession 1900 The city of Tianjin was a treaty port in China 1860 divided into nine foreign-controlled concessions Chinese, Zujia Pinyin, Zuji. In the years following the Boxer Rebellion, the diplomat Maurice Eusens negotiated a concession for Belgium. The Belgian concession was proclaimed on 7 November 1900 and spanned some 100 hectares 250 acres. 
Although Belgian companies invested in Tianjin, especially in the city's tram system, the Belgian concession remained inactive. An agreement was reached between the Belgian and Chinese governments in August 1929 to return the concession to China. The agreement was approved by the Belgian parliament on 13 July 1931. In the late 19th century, Belgian engineers were employed on construction of the Beijing Hankou Railway, leading the Belgian government to unsuccessfully claim a concession in Hankou. The Belgian claim was never formally recognized and the proposal was dropped in 1908. Azola Comicina In 1919, the island of Comacina was bequeathed to King Albert I of Belgium for a year, and became an enclave under the sovereignty of Belgium. After a year, it was returned to the Italian state in 1920. The Consul of Belgium and the President of the Brera Academy established a charitable foundation with the goal of building a village for artists and a hotel. See also History of Belgium Atrocities in the Congo Free State Foreign Relations of Belgium Société Belgi de Etudes Coloniales Est, 1894 École Coloniale Supérieure Est, 1920 in Antwerp Institut Royal Colonial Belgi Est, 1928 Belgium-Mexico Relations Topic. Notes and references Topic. Footnotes Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Anstey, Roger King Leopold's Legacy, The Congo under Belgian Rule 1908–1960. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Nzongola Nt Alasia, Georges. The Congo from Leopold to Kabila, A People's History. London, Z Books. ISBN 978-1-84277-052-8. Freund, Bill. The Making of Contemporary Africa, The Development of African Society Since 1800 ed. Basingstoke, Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-333-69872-3. Pakenham, Thomas The Scramble for Africa, The White Man's Conquest of the Dark Continent from 1876 to 1912 13th ed. London, Abacus. ISBN 978-0-349-10449-2. Turner, Thomas the Congo Wars, Conflict, Myth, and Reality 2nd ed. London, Z Books. ISBN 978-1-84277-688-9. Neild, Robert China's Foreign Places, The Foreign Presence in China in the Treaty Port Era, 1840-1943. Hong Kong, Hong Kong University Press. ISBN 978-988-8139-28-6. Topic. External links Belgian concession at Tianjin under nine flags project University of Bristol